The Wings of the Dove is a book about concealing. Kate loves Merton, but they can't afford to marry. Enter Millie, a wealthy orphan with a crush on Merton and a fatal illness. Kate concocts a scheme. Merton will pretend to fall in love with Millie. Millie will die and leave Merton all her money with which he will marry Kate. It's win, 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 as long as everything stays hidden. says Kate about lying to Millie. We're making her want to live. It's wonderful. It's beautiful. A from herself the fact that she is dying. Because to face it was to bring down the avalanche. The avalanche she lived so in watchful that might be started by the lightest of breaths, and then Millie learns the truth. Shortly after, Millie dies. But first, she meets Merton one more time. We, the readers, never see this last encounter. We only see Merton seeing it in memory. not 
not to lose it. Millie does leave Merton all her money, but he doesn't take it. And he doesn't marry Kate. The Winter's Tale is a play in two parts. One dark, violent, and psychologically brutal. The other light, pastoral, and filled with loving reconciliation. In the first part, the king of Sicilia is in a murderous rage because he suspects that his pregnant wife, the queen, is fooling around with his best friend. Everyone tries to tell him that nothing's going on. Is whispering nothing, he replies. Is leaning cheek to cheek. Is meeting noses. Kissing of inside lip. Stopping the career of laughter with a sigh. A note unfallible of breaking honesty. Horsing foot on foot. Skulking in corners. Wishing clocks more swift. Hours, minutes, noon, midnight, and all eyes. Blind with a pin and web, but theirs, theirs only. That would unseen be wicked.
nothing, literally nothing is going on. The queen is innocent and the king is completely delusional and paranoid. It's nothing. Nevertheless, the queen is imprisoned. She goes into early labor and the king orders the infant princess to be abandoned in the wilderness. Soon after, the queen is reported to have died of grief. Then, the story jumps 16 years into the future, where we find ourselves in the Bohemian countryside. When daffodils begin to peer with hay, the dogs see over the dale. Why it comes in the sweet of the year, for the red blood rains and the winter's pale. The white sheep bleaching on the hedge with hay, the sweet birds, oh how they sing. Don't sit my hugging tooth on edge for a quart of ale is a dish for a king. A young prince has fallen in love with a shepherdess, but this is no ordinary shepherdess. This is the mad king's daughter, who was abandoned 16 years ago as a baby. The young lovers run away together to the very kingdom the girl was born in. There, the mad king has grown repentant and now rejoices to see his long lost daughter. He takes her to see a statue of her dead mother, the queen. But wait, the statue is moving. It breathes, it is alive. The queen lives. She embraces her husband and daughter. The prince and princess are married and all is well throughout the kingdom. When daffodils begin to peer with hay, the dogs see over the dale. Why it comes in the sweet of the year, for the red blood rains and the winter's pale. The white sheep they jing on the hedge with hay, the sweet birds, oh how they sing. Don't set my pugging tooth on edge, for a quart of ale is a dish for a king. But here's the thing. If the queen was alive that whole time, what was she doing for 16 years? How was she living? As an exile in her own country? Her husband deranged? Her child lost? Her life shattered? She doesn't have any lines at the end of the play. We never get those years filled in. We just get the happy ending. When Emma Dills begin to peer with hay For the red blood rains and the winter's pale The white sheep bleaching on the hedge with hay For a quart of ale is a dish for a king When Emma Dills begin to peer with hay The dogs see over the dale Why did come?
Ancient Greek tragedy is a genre of the lost. Carcinus the Younger wrote a play about Zeus's lover Semele, for which we have the opening words. Nothing else. The single surviving line from the playwright Aristarchus is a meta theatrical address to both the characters and the audience. Rise up, Herald! Be sure that the people here be quiet and stay silent and pay attention! Scraps from the playwright Critias reveal a preoccupation with the underworld. So that in silence we may pour these water vessels into the chasm. The lost plays of Philocles apparently earned him the nickname Bile. Sometimes we get a glimpse of familiar characters, like in a play by Ion, whose fragments suggest a love affair between Odysseus and Helen of Troy. And how did the stranger arrive in the fragments touch on real events, like those from a play by Phrynichus about the Battle of Salamis. and there is evidence of one astonishing rarity. A play by Agathon that, unlike any other known Greek tragedy, is not based on history or myth, but is purely fictional. However, nothing survives with this play, except the title. And actually, the title itself is in dispute. But sometimes, there is just enough of a lost play to give a sense of plot. We can almost trace the shape formed by the broken pieces. If we could just see through the noise.
remains of ancient Greek tragedy is just a handful of words, a flicker, a trace. Dim. 